Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the Elite Estate Gatuai Wash Process Panama from Burr Coffee Roasters. And there's the bag right there. And Verve, based out of Santa Cruz, California. And this coffee was a suggestion to us by our good buddy Jack. So shout outs to and thank you to Jack for the suggestion. This is our first ever full bag review of one of Verve's coffees, though they are a coffee roaster I have a long and extensive history with. However, it has been a couple of years since I've last had one of their coffees, so I've been waiting for an opportunity to finally review them when Jack brought this coffee to my attention as a non-Gesha washed Panamanian coffee, which will always immediately catch my interest. So I'm looking forward to finally reviewing Verve as this right here is day 29. And Verve does have a brew guide on their website, and it's a very concentrated recipe at a 15 to 1 water to coffee ratio. Went a little bit more diluted on this one at a 16.67 to 1 water to coffee ratio. Brewed at 201 degree Fahrenheit, and I like this one best through the Chemex, which indicates a more medium grind. Rose profile for this one's interesting. So they have their own scale, and they list this at a 3 out of 10 on their scale, which is on the lighter side of their spectrum, one being as light as they go and 10 being as dark as they go. However, I feel like most people would consider this to be closer to a medium by most standards and metrics, maybe on the slightly lighter side of that medium, but definitely closer to a medium than even something like a light medium, as there's a fair bit of development within this coffee. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day nine, first impression, and the coffee wasn't particularly in line with the descriptors as it did come out very Panamanian-like in the sense that it had a very floral forward aspect to it with that sugar cookie component that I note with so many of the non-Gesha Panamanian coffees that I've either reviewed or just had in my life in general. Definitely a little bit more development than I think I was expecting, and it's been a while since I've had Verve's coffees, so I think I remember them being a little bit lighter than this coffee was. However, I could definitely tell from that first impression, given that there was a fair bit of smokiness from that first try. Slightly bitter citric component, but overall pretty nice. Uh, people at this point know my love for Panamanian coffees in general, so getting some nice Panamanian characteristics right up the start made for a better than anticipated first experience with that smokiness. Day 11, ran it through the Chemex, and it was slightly better as it continues to remain floral forward with, again, a touch of that extra development to the cup. More of the Panamanian cookie-like sweetness felt through this brew method as there's that listed malt, and I couldn't help but feel like it might pertain to the texture because they have a peach tea note listed on here, and I would say that this coffee definitely has a fair bit of body to it, so I just kind of assumed that that malt might have to do with the texture because the texture was a little bit more unique than I've experienced from a lot of coffees. It just has a heavier body to it in general, even when brewed through the Chemex. So, those my, were my initial impressions with our two preferred brew methods. We continue on to day 13 as I ran it through the April dripper and it was a pretty nice day for this coffee in general as it does have a fair bit more of that sugar cookie sweetness with a slight bit more brightness to it. Florality is still present and the cup in general just felt a little bit more well-rounded on this day. So coffee appears to be trending in the right direction. We continue on to day 15 as I ran it back through the Chemex and it felt like there was a little bit more of the listed peach note that they had on here at this time, though it's a little bit more of this kind of bright stone fruit component, a little less defined, and it has this kind of like milkshake-like aspect to it, given that it has this very kind of distinct texture to it. Florality now more of a secondary component to what I would describe as that bright stone fruit aspect. Day 19. Adjusted to Verve's recipe, and this really didn't help, and I didn't think it would necessarily help given that this coffee in general just had that development to it, and it leaned very heavily into the smoky aspects of it. It does improve as it cools down with a little bit more of that kind of sugar cookie sweetness to it, and again, that kind of peach milkshake-like texture aspect present on this day as well. However, I didn't necessarily like the more concentrated recipe as it definitely did seem to skew a lot more on those developed characteristics. Day 21, the slightly smoky aspects are present yet again as the stone fruit-like brightness in the cup hasn't changed too much and uh, there's still a fair bit of the florality and cookie-like sweetness with a 
bunch of that texture that I previously mentioned. This coffee at this point did become a little bit consistent and if there was one kind of takeaway I could say is that it really has to cool down for you to experience a lot of the sweetness and in that time you're getting a fair bit of the smokiness right at the onset so that's kind of off-putting and by the time you do get to the more pleasant characteristics of this coffee you're definitely still feeling a fair bit of the roasty characteristics within it. Day 23, lowered the temperatures, ran it through the Chemex, and I liked it best to the Chemex for the reason that you didn't really sacrifice a whole lot of the texture and body in this coffee by running it through the Chemex, and that's usually the biggest takeaway I have with the Chemex. If anything, it did clear this coffee a little bit with a vanilla-like aspect, and uh, more of that slightly smoky peach aspect within this coffee, and again, I think that's kind of the best descriptor I could come up with it, is it's like a, we'll say, smoky peach milkshake with a uh, sugar cookie aspect to it. I know that sounds really nice, however, I think the smokiness just kind of took away from the beauty that was present within the coffee otherwise. Day 26, uh, final note we have, best day of the coffee to this point as, correction, it actually feels like the best of this coffee's uh, been in its past as it's coming out pretty smoky today. And I mentioned that earlier, here on day 29, it's the same way as well. Right at the forefront, it really just has a lot of the smoky characteristics and you really need to let the coffee cool down to experience much more of those pleasant components. The sugar cookie remains every bit as defined as it had been on the earlier days. However, you're just losing a little bit more of the definition within the stone fruit-like aspect to this coffee. Continues yielding a heavy body that's been consistent throughout and it's no surprise it didn't change much by the end. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we're getting. All right, and we have two level fours, so we will go through those real quick. The body at a level four, yes, that's one thing I mentioned, was it had a little bit of this unique body to it, and I can't help but feel that's what they were going for with the malt. It just felt like it had, um, I don't even know how to describe the texture. It was just a heavier texture in general to this coffee. So even when run through the Chemex, it had a fair bit of body. I would say maybe on the lower side of level four, but definitely right there at that level four. And I can only wonder how the body would be in this coffee if you ran it through an immersion brewer of some sort. So definitely on the higher side of the body with this one. Stone fruit, level four. I think that's being a little generous. If anything, it was a little bit of an undefined stone fruit and maybe you could justify bumping it there. It is at points pretty distinct in this coffee. However, at no point would I say it was a truly peach-like cup of coffee. We have a bunch of level threes. We will start with the, I guess we'll start with the finish, level three. At the same time, it does have this kind of quick finish to it. I could still say it's on the higher side of level three, and if anything, the most defining aspect in the finish of this coffee is the slight smokiness that's present within it. So not necessarily the type of finish that I do enjoy. Sweetness, level three. Yes, I will also say that that one's on the higher side of level three, and it's very much in line with that sugar cookie aspect that I list for so many Panamanian coffees, especially non-Geshas. So that one right there, I could definitely see that. Acidity, level three, again, a little bit of the brightness in terms of the stone fruit aspect, but that one right there, I feel like wasn't too overly dominant within this coffee. Feels perfect right there at that level three mark. Florality, level three, yes, that one is one of the more, I would say, consistent and defining aspects of this coffee. A little surprised that they didn't have some sort of floral note listed on here, but I definitely felt a little bit of the white flower present throughout the time drinking this one. Uh, then the two things, I really probably should discuss the most. We'll discuss the citrus first real quick. Yeah, I think they have a grapefruit note list on here. Slightly bitter citric component to it that's also in line with the brightness in this. I think a lot of the reason I bumped the stone fruit up to level four was just because it was a little bit more pronounced than the citric component within this coffee. But they're in maybe slightly equal abundance in that sense. Chocolate level three, it's a little bit more of a cleaner chocolate. And I think I just kind of put that sugar cookie component into that chocolate because I didn't necessarily find a good place to put that. And now the two things, the most important things we must discuss in this tasting wheel. We will start with the cleanliness and it's at a level three. And it was definitely marred by the other thing we're going to be discussing, which is that smokiness, because I was really hoping that this coffee would have just some great clarity to it. And given that it didn't necessarily have the most defined uh, stone fruit aspect in it, that took away from it. But in addition to that, of course, the smokiness being very pronounced in this coffee also took away from it. It's really unfortunate because if we're just focusing on the one part that was most defined, which was that sugar cookie-like aspect as well as that florality, then I could definitely see it being at a level four. And if we just kind of sacrifice everything else within this coffee, then it's very much that type of Panamanian coffee that I enjoy. 
And then the smokiness at a level three, it goes down the more you drink this coffee. So the cooler it gets, the less smokiness there's present within it. And right after it's been brewed, it's very abundantly clear. It's very dominant in the coffee. And I did work a lot to kind of tone it down within this coffee. And of course, the best way I typically find in terms of doing that is to lower the temperatures. And that's why we went all the way down to 201 because it did dilute a fair bit of the smokiness. And also the more diluted recipe definitely did help with that as well. So level three, that's kind of the best I was able to get it. It still feels like a fairly smoky cup of coffee in general, but I would say that this is a pretty accurate representation of what I was getting across the brew methods that we played around with this coffee. So I think it's a pretty good tasting whale for what I was experiencing. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee, it's the same anytime this happens with a non gesho wash Panamanian coffee. I go into it with such high standards and expectations, and it's a double-edged sword in a sense because I'm going to probably like this coffee given that I like the profile of Panamanian coffees way more than almost everything else. However, that comes with some really high expectations, and when it feels a little bit more developed than I like, then that immediately kind of takes away from how much I really enjoyed this coffee. So that's the case with this one right here. I wish it wasn't as developed as it was because there is so much beauty within this coffee as I've been kind of going through all the wonderful aspects that are present within it, but it was just really kind of marred by the smokiness that took away from all of those things. Very unfortunate in that sense. So it happens. I wish people wouldn't overdevelop a lot of these Panamanian coffees. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to, it has so many beautiful aspects, so I wanna highlight those real quick. The body in itself was unique, so people that do enjoy a little bit more body. Definitely the development, so if you do enjoy some more kind of like medium profile for your coffees, then that's another good way to go with this one. But in addition to that, it did have some nice sweetness to it. It did have some stone fruit-like aspects to it. There was a fair bit of brightness, so you're getting a little bit of depth to this coffee in general, in addition to some florality as well. So just in general, a well-rounded cup, if maybe is one sticking point to me on this one. I think for the most part, I'll leave this review at that. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee or anything from Verve, would love to know your thoughts and impressions of it or them as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Alita Estate Catuai Wash Process Panama from Verve Coffee Roasters. Thank you for watching.